These, when we're trying to find GCFs in the book, they will often write it like this. I don't see any reason for you to rewrite it like this in the book when it's going to be easier to line them up like this. Because we're looking for the things that they have in common, and so we're going to like put them over each other and start listing out their factors. What are the factors of 15 first? One, because that's positive, times? Three times five. And then how many x's? Three. three. One, two, three. And then what are my factors of nine? One times three, three times, times three. three times x. Okay, and I'm going to circle what it has in common. They have the one, there's a single three. This five is by itself and this three is by itself. They have to have partners for them to be in common. We have two x's and this one's left over here, right? So what do we have as our in common? One times three times x times x, which equals? So the GCF is 3x squared. Let me see thumbs. Where are you feeling about this? Okay. Um, how about 4x squared and 5y to the third? Okay, when we're looking at these, what is our GCF going to be? One. Yeah, and again, if you're labeling, or if you're, you're putting these out here and you're showing the positive one, that's going to make it really obvious that the GCF is one. Okay, I'm going to give you a different one. How about 18 G squared and 27 G to the third? You guys ready to compare? No. Here's what mine looks like laid out. What do I have in common? I have my ones. I have two threes and two Gs. So this times this times this are going to give me 9G squared. Feeling pretty good about these? Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't ask you a lot of questions, but... No, I like it. Ask questions. For 18? Uh-huh. I did it in my head, so hopefully I didn't mess it up. But I was thinking 2 times 3 is 6 times yeah. 3 is 18. Wait, no. And then I checked myself in my head by going 3 times 3 is 9 times 2. So I just kind of use two different factor pairs that I know that break down into the primes. So that's kind of a good shortcut way. Okay, um, I am going to give you guys some practice work to do in the book. And you're going to need to either get a book or go online to pull this open. Again, this is 8-1. We are into Chapter 8. We do all of Chapter 8. And i got to tell you guys, my objective, I'll go write it up on the board in just a minute. It's going to be students will be able to factor polynomials. So that's everything we're doing in chapter six. There's only six lessons. We're gonna hopefully be into eight two before spring break, and then we'll come back from spring break and do three, four, five, and six over the next couple of weeks. So it's about a two and a half week chapter. It's one of my favorites actually, because factoring is kind of, okay. It's one of the things I hated and was one of my roadblocks to passing algebra the first time. I love it now, and I think it's because I got past the hurdle, so if any of you struggle, trust me, I'm going to be there to help you get past it.
So we're starting today on page 547. Oops, it would help if I wrote the whole thing. I put 57 instead of 547. Okay. And you guys are going to work on problems 13 to 15, 28 to 30. There is not a ton of practice in this. Uh, on the same page, we're still doing 32 to 35. And then I'm going to have you turn to page 548. And we're going to go back to factor trees from yesterday, because there's factor trees and step factors, 47 to 55. OK? We should easily be done in the time you guys have today. It sounds like a lot of there are a few of you who were interested in retaking the Chapter 7 test. Today might be a good day to come and sit with me and look at what on the test you struggled with so I can give you some guidance on what to study to review. Um, or we can do review together. And 